Oh, yeah. Here come the snacks. Snack delivery. Whoa. Whoa, these are intense. They look like curly fries. She's going to need a napkin. Me? Thank, thank you. Yeah. Why? These are messy. Ooh, those are so good. I just used my pinchy nails. Ooh, that's tasty. Great. Wow. Mmm. I will eat all of these. I hope you know. <laughs> I'm gonna, I need more of those. Yeah, go ahead. Welcome to the 82nd episode of Beer and Fear. My name is Zach. My name is Paige. We're going to talk about Joe. How do you say his last name? I've just been saying Methany. Methany. M Methany? Or Methany? He looks like he does meth. Methany? I mean, Pretty sure he's done that methamphetamine. before. Methamphetamine. The drug. I think he's done it before. Methany? Go. Methany or Methany? Meth Methany. Methany, maybe? Yeah. So many ways to say his name. It doesn't matter because he's dead. Um, well, you just spoiled it. Yeah, but uh, before we talk about Joe, how was your week? Quick recap. Sorry, these are really tasty. They are fucking delicious. Zach's wonderful fiance um, made us a snacky snack. Yum. Delicious. It was good. Your week? It was, it was good? You asked me to... Can I say that? Can I say that? Yeah. You asked me to be your best man. Mm -hmm. I'm very excited about that. Mm -hmm. Warm the fuck out of a tux. <laughs> oh, I'm going to look good. Now I got to get with Jack to plan your bachelor party. I've already been mm -hmm. thinking about it. Mm -hmm. I have ideas in mind. How do you feel about smoking expensive cigars? Oh, fuck yeah. Oh. <laughs> I mean, some expensive cigars and some whiskey. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I was thinking, I don't want to spoil everything, but I was thinking possibly a whiskey lounge. Um, with, or cigar lounge because that involves an open bar with whiskey. Mm -hmm. So, that's an idea. Dream come true. Any hoozles. It was good. I saw my family. Uh, work's been good. I start my program for becoming a teacher. Um, I got my information yesterday. I'm starting it tomorrow. Um, Hell yeah. yeah. One of my friends uh, is getting a job at my place. So... Incredible. That's nice. Good shit. I'm just going to staff it fully with everyone I know, and then we're all going to quit. <laughs> Relatives and friends, and then you're going to all quit at the same yeah, time. exactly. Um, I can't think of anything else. Oh, my mom. My mom, my birth mother, came to visit. Yeah. She came into town. We saw her yesterday. Um, I think I'm going to see her tomorrow as well. It's been two years since wow. I saw her last. That's a long time. Yep. I'm glad you guys got to hang out and spend some time together. Very nice time with her. Wonderful. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Exciting stuff. Yes, very much so. What about you, Bubba? It's been an eventful week. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, the 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 best man thing. Oh, he got me such a cute gift too. Yeah. I'll have to post it on Instagram. Yeah. I did post it on Instagram. You did. Yeah, I did post it. I gotta post a picture of the octopus though. Yeah. I, he got uh, me a, a worldwide. Um, World Wildlife Fund. Yeah, World Wildlife Fund. Um, oh, excuse, not for you. Excuse you. Dink bink. Um, a World Wildlife Fund adoption certificate um, for an octopus. And I still haven't figured out a name for him. I'm yeah. still thinking Ocho. You time. Ocho. Oh, yeah. Ocho. Uh, yeah, it, ca it came with an octopus plushie. He's the cutest octopus plushie I've ever seen in my life. And then I've been looking for an octopus plushie for years. Oh, really? Yes. I didn't know you you had been looking. I'm yes. glad I could finally. Actively looking, and I thought they were all ugly. <laughs> I'm very picky. It's pretty adorable. So fucking cute. He's on my bed next to my little Plague Doctor plushie. A Plague Doctor plushie? Yeah, Madison oh, got it for me. Ooh. Mm -hmm, my little sister. I dig that. It's cute. Um. Yeah, yeah. and a, a picture of the octopus that yeah, you adopted. A picture of the octopus. Possibly uh, the octopus named Ocho. Mm-hmm. Possibly. Mm-hmm. So that was cool. Yeah. Um, I asked you to be my best man, and mm -hmm. Ale asked her sister to be her maid of honor, 
We had a steak dinner. It was so good. Delicious. It was tangy in a good way. A lot of gifts. Um, oh, and yeah, we, and, a, and a bottle of the like alien, alien vodka. Alien vodka. It's on my shelf. I love it. I, we, we saw that in Benny's and it's like, you got to get that for Paige. 100%. I don't care what kind of liquor it is. I don't care how strong it is. If it tastes like shit, it's an alien. I would just put it on a shelf and keep it forever. Mm-hmm. Uh, we went to the shed. That was a lot of fun. Went I to didn't Chicago. I didn't ask you. Ask me. How was your week? Oh, thanks. I like to ask first. That's awful polite of you. Thank you. <laughs> we went to the shed. Went to Chicago. Took a train downtown and walked all the way to the shed, and that was fun. And uh, we saw the bean, because her sister really wanted to see the bean, and... And we went to uh drawing room, the magic place. It was, it was a good time. It was a great time in Chicago. Is it called Chicago. the drawing room or is it called the magic place? The hotel is called the Chicago Athletic Association. Right. On the, I believe it's the second floor, the third floor. I don't know. Um, they have, well, because you go upstairs and then you go up another set of stairs. So it's like stairs and stairs. So I think it might technically be the third floor. doesn't matter. Upstairs, they've got um, a bunch of different really cool rooms. The one that we spend the most time in is called the drawing room. You can just, it's sort of like a lounge for the hotel. And then they have the game room, and then they have the cherry circle room, and then they have the milk room, and then they have, yeah, a couple other rooms. All very fancy. What happens in the milk room? Uh, The milk room is a private room. Uh, It seats about, I think, eight people, and you can taste some very expensive, like, top, top, top shelf whiskeys and cocktails. Um, that they don't serve in, in any of the other rooms. So you need to usually make a reservation or if there's free spaces, you can ask to go in and you can spend like 40 bucks on a glass of whiskey. Really expensive, delicious uh, oh, maybe drinks. Maybe you should go there for your bachelor party. It, yeah, it's just, it's pricey, but it's, I mean. Yeah, but, you know, it's marriage. Good. Yeah, only it's only going to happen once, so might as well. Uh, it was good. Chicago is great. I'm, for whatever reason, struggling to think about all the other stuff that we did. Uh, I spent some time at the theater. Sunday, <clears throat> Sunday we went to Blue Sushi. Oh, yeah, I saw that. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm sorry. Saturday we went to Blue Sushi. Saturday we went to Blue Sushi. It was packed. Did you like it? Was... Yeah. Did you like it? I love it. Yeah, the sushi was fantastic, yeah. except the it, it, it was the first nice day of the year. It was 80 degrees, super nice out, and then it was prom night. So oh, it was prom night? Everyone, yeah, everyone was downtown. And it was an hour wait to get a table. Damn. And then it was an hour wait for the sushi. Damn. Because they only had like two people making the sushi that I guess they were short staffed or whatever. But yeah, we were waiting for a long time. And then we were trying to, because I needed to go to work. So we were trying to get out of there quick. And we got our sushi like with 20 minutes to spare. We scarfed it all down in 20 minutes. and. <laughs> Uh, but it was it was really good. Still my favorite sushi place. I just wasn't a fan of the, the waiting around. But what are you going to do? Oh, well. Yeah. Uh, Joe Metheny, Metheny, Metheny. The, the beer I'm really excited about. It was a recommendation from uh, Jerry, my stepmom. Oh. My dad's wife. Um, she yeah. took a picture of the, the can, sent it to me. It's like, you guys should do this on an episode. It'd be really cool. It's like, oh, yeah, I, I can pair that with a episode no problem so the brewery um for episode 82 is off color brewing ah, haven't done them in a long time been a bit. episode three we did off color we had um apex predator mm-hmm. for our episode on stalkers episode three we did off color it's been a long time i think i still see apex predator in Benny's. yeah I yeah, think it's, it's year round. It is a year round uh, offering. It's a delicious, uh, I believe it's a Kolsch, really, really good beer. Um, so I'm excited to try another beer by these guys. I'm okay, thank you. They're so good. Um, so Off Color is located at 3925 West Dickens Avenue in Chicago, hey, Illinois, 60647. That's right, I said Dick. What the Dickens? 3925 West Dickens in Chicago. Off Color is an American craft beer brewery in the Logan Square neighborhood of Chicago, Illinois. The brewery began in early 2013 as a partnership between John Laffler, formerly with Goose Island Brewery, and Dave Bleitner, formerly with Two Brothers Brewing. Uh, Zoom in because my eyes are getting bad. The modus operandi 
of Off Colors founders, when they began operation was to focus on brewing forgotten styles of beer, particularly those made in Germany before Reinheitsgebot. Reinheitsgebot. You did that last time, too. Yep, I said that word last time, too. It's the Bavarian Purity Law. Uh, it was proclaimed in the late 15th century, effectively condemning myriad styles of beer not made solely with barley, water, and hops. So all the weird beards, they, they were like, nah, no more of that. Uh, and Off Color was hoping to brew uh, beers produced before that was enacted. So I like that. From their website, at some point, John and Dave were born. They did other stuff for a while, and then they figured out they were better at making beer than at the other stuff. So that's what they do now. They met while both studied at the oldest and most respected brewing school of the two, and by the brewers that went to the one, in the U.S., the Siebel Institute in 2008, and the brewery was envisioned while they both interned at Metropolitan Brewing afterwards. Hey! Yeah, I thought that was neat. Most of Off Color's business plan is based off of Doug and Tracy at Metro knowing what they're doing. So you should go buy some of their beer, too. We did. They're great. We did. After cutting their teeth at larger breweries, the two somehow convinced enough otherwise very smart people to invest enough money for them to buy some big shiny things to make their own beer in. So that's what they do now. The beer is called Beer for Butchers. Ah, uh, you're funny. This beer is not on their website anymore. I'm guessing they're no longer brewing it. It was released just last month as a collab with Kuma's Corner in Chicago. Oh. Yeah, I like Kuma's. I think I went there once. I think I've eaten there once. Uh, it's delicious. It's uh, one of the iconic, more iconic restaurants in Chicago. It's a blend of Hell's Lager and Basil Hayden Bourbon Barrel Aged Lager. An easy drinking lager with a little extra oomph crafted to pair perfectly with the best damn burgers in the universe. And you can get those from Kuma's Corner in Chicago. That's why they did that pairing. Uh, last month they released it. Um, they had an event page and everything like that. And it was really cool. I wish I... Uh, could have known about that. I would have tried to go to Kuma's and get some, but they're not. I don't think they're making it anymore. But I, I did manage to find some. They do have a lot of beer for blank offerings. Uh, off color makes a lot of beer for golf, beer for cookouts, beer for lunch, beer for breakfast, beer for whatever, beer for sports, beer for sports. So this is beer for butchers. Hmm. Uh, this beer is technically a Maybach. Beer Advocate calls this a Maybach. Untapped labels it as an American lager. Benny's calls it a Hell's Lager, and Off Color calls it a Hell's Bach. So oh, that's all over the place. Yeah. So let's we'll break that down a little bit. We'll start with the easy stuff. We know what American lagers are. American lagers are American lagers. Hell's is a German style of beer. Hell's means pale in color. I'm sorry. It's Helles. Helles means pale in color, as these beers are often golden. The German-style Helles Lager is a bit rounder or fuller bodied than the uh, than light lager and even all malt pilsners. Helles Lager beers offer a touch of sweetness that balance a measurable addition of spicy German hop flavor and light bitterness. The malt character is soft and bready, making it a terrific complement to light dishes such as salad or fresh uh, shellfish like clams. Clean and crisp, this is a refreshing beer with substance. Low levels of yeast produce sulfur aromas and flavors may be common. That is a Helles Hellas style beer. Uh, now, what is a Bach? Because um, Off Color calls it a Hellas Bach. So Bach, traditional Bach beers are smooth, all malt lagers and are high in malt sweetness. Malt characters should be a balance of sweetness and toasted or nut-like malt. Fun fact, Bach translates as goat. Oh. So my box are a variation of Bach, also called Heller Bach meaning pale Bach. The German-style Maybach, which is what this is, is paler in color and more hop-centric than traditional Bach beers. A lightly toasted and or bready malt character is often evident. So this beer is a Helles Bach, combining characteristics of both of those styles, both a Bach and a Helles. This is 7% ABV, unknown IBU or SRM, no score on Beer Advocate, and you can follow Off Color Brewing at Off Color Brewing on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, or go to the website offcolorbrewing.com. Get the Dot com. Uh, I broke another glass. What? A Spiegelau? Nope. I broke uh, one of my wine glasses. How do you keep doing this? One of the stemmed ones. Um, I was grabbing something from the shelf, and it slipped out of my hands and fell right on the wine glass. And it didn't break the glass. It broke the stem <sighs> of the glass. So... 
rendering it unusable. I didn't like the hanging meat in this, but I do like the little bear. I like the bear. And the little bear butcher. He's got a little hamburger on a scale. Hell's box style beer. Blended, blended with bourbon barrel aged lager. Oh, it says... Um, 7%. The the malts, the hops, and the secret oh, technique. Bourbon barrel lager. Pills, Vienna, Munich, and Magnum and Herzbrucker hops. Pills, Vienna, Munich, malts. Hell yeah. According to the Surgeon General. Oh, there it is. You said Jer Jerry yes. recommended this? Yes. That's such a strange smell. Mmm. It, so it smells familiar. It smells a little fruity. Why does that smell familiar? Ooh. It smells like a German Kolsch. Mmm. German lager. I love lagers. So crisp. Good for the summer. Good I for know, drinking but I in like summer. That smell. It is a good smell. Ooh. A little more amber in color than I thought. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe it smells yeasty. Yeah. Yeasty, bready. I don't really smell hops. It is very amber. Mm hmm. Good clink. Ooh. I'm confused. That didn't taste anything like I thought it would. That was not what I was expecting. I was expecting... Maybe I was just expecting a Pilsner for some reason. Mentally, I was like, this is going to be like a Pilsner. Yeah, the aroma is similar. Pilsners and Kolsch's and... Hmm. What is that flavor? So it's a... It's a... This is paler than a Bach. Bachs are dark. Yeah. So this is in between. Because a Helles is the, like the color of a lager. So this is definitely in between. It's paler in color and more hop-centric than traditional box. Lightly toasted and or bready malt character is often evident. So Maybe that's why I don't like it. Got it in the smell, and it's definitely, it's malty. It's more malty than hop, I I'm think. not a big malty fan. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But this is interesting. This is our our first Maybach. Really? That we're trying, yes. Yeah, we've never had a beer like this on the show before, so trying a new style. Hmm. I think it's, I think it's interesting. I like it. It's just, yeah, a little, little malty, yeasty, and, and bready. Maybe a little too much for me, but uh, it's, it's tasty. I think if I had any more than this, I don't think I would like a Bach. If, if it's, if it's I, more of this, then I don't know. I don't think so. I'm not particularly blown away right now, and I kind of think the taste is a little odd. Thank you. Now imagine eating a burger while you're drinking this. I think it, it tastes pretty damn good. I think they'd be very pleasant together. I agree. Mm -hmm. It sits in my belly in a nice way. It is. Uh, it's not a thick beer. No. At all, but it's a. It seems like a filling beer. Definitely, yeah. I agree. Again, yeasty. It kind of reminds me of um, uh, Metropolitan's, not their uh, Krankenstein beer. Mm -hmm. But the other beer that they uh, sent us home with when I visited the brewery to pick up the cans, I cannot remember the name of that beer for the life of me, but it's, um, it was similar. Oh, it was a dark, it was a dark lager. <laughs> Pretty sure. Usually you have like something funny, like a quip to say. Oh, let's talk about. Joe Metheny. Wow, you really <laughs> killed that. <laughs> Joseph Metheny, Meth Metheny was born in Baltimore, Maryland on March 2nd, 1955. A fucking Pisces. And uh, March 55? 1955. That was the year my mom was born. Fucking Pisces. What does that tell you, people? Serial killers. A lot of them. I think Ollie's a Pisces. Yeah. <laughs> I stand by my statement. His father was an alcoholic who abused his family and would die in a car accident when he was Ooh. six years old. His mother worked a series of jobs and was seldom home due to her working double shifts. Joe claimed his mother was dead and she sent them off to live with relatives. However, Joe's mother is very much alive and she denied sending off her children. 
I just want to clarify. You said he died when he was six. When his father was six, he died in a car accident? When Joe was six. Got it. His father died. Got it. Do you think he <laughs> fathered a, a child at six? A six-year-old alcoholic who abused his family and died in a car accident. <laughs> what at an the age angry of six. toddler! I don't. <laughs> and he's got a son and a wife already. <laughs> Listen here, wife. Can't see over the steering wheel. Yeah, I, I will know. turn this car around. I will turn this car around. <laughs> he can't pronounce the T in anything. Mm. -mm. Okay. He would join the U.S. Army when he turned 18 in 1973. According to Joe, he served time in Vietnam. However, this was never proven. And that he also spent time in Germany. Uh, but the time frame does not make any sense. No, it doesn't. After his stint in the Army, Joe would drift around and his addiction to drugs and alcohol would begin. Uh Joseph Metheny, Metheny was living in a series of homeless camps in the Baltimore, Maryland area, oh. as all of his money was spent on alcohol and drugs. However, he was able to keep a job as a forklift operator at a wooden pallet company. In 94, he when I was born. began his extracurricular activities. <laughs> you know. His second job. Yeah, his, his second job. Uh, his mother said they, they were somewhat poor when they were younger. Um, I forgot to mention. She worked as a waitress, a barmaid, and a food truck driver. At once? Yeah, all those jobs. Okay. Oh, yeah. Well, single mom. She claimed that the children were given a normal family life. They had never gone hungry or been put into homes of other families, as Joe had claimed. Hmm. I wonder who was making all those strange false claims. She said that Joe was an above-average student, always polite and not mean as a child. She said that he was smart and had a good childhood. If he was neglected, it was his own fault. It was a pretty good home. Okay. He was neglected. It was his own fault. Strong words. Hmm. <laughs> when he was in Vietnam, mm -hmm. uh, he became addicted to heroin while in an, while in an artillery unit. Mm. I didn't know there was like ready like available drugs in the war well his mother said that she didn't recall him serving in the war so oh well yeah that's right you did do the air quotes for vietnam <laughs> yeah uh so funny hmm he seldom contacted his mother after he joined the army she said he just kept drifting further and further away she mm. said i think the worst thing that ever happened to him was drugs it's a sad sad story mm-hmm we talked about drugs I have a whole episode on drugs. Just go listen to it. Um, so Joe did some stuff um, that he probably shouldn't have done. The The background, his life makes sense. The, the drug abuse, the addiction, not being close with his family, his father dying. I guess that kind of all plays into his behavior. So it all started back. This is actually, I'm going to, throughout my section, I'm going to have some quotes um, from his confession. On um, this website that we look at often, murderpedia.org, for serial killers. Sometimes you can find some interesting stuff. They put, like, news articles on there, but I found a direct quote from his confession, so I'll, I'll have a lot of quotes from him. So this is a quote. It all started back in July of 1994. I was at work. I was a truck driver. I was working overtime this one night. Then I got off and went home as I always did. But when I opened the door and turned on the light, I noticed there was nothing there. My old lady had taken everything, including my son, and left me. Her leaving was not my problem, but she took my six-year-old son with her. She was a crack addict and a worthless piece of shit. I would have paid her to get out of my life. All she had to do was take my son over to my mother's house, and she could have had everything else and be gone. I found out about six months later she had moved on the other side of town with some asshole that had her out selling her ass for drugs. They got busted for drugs and they took my son away from them for child neglect and child abuse. I had no chance of going to social services and trying to get my son back due to my past criminal record. So I took it upon myself with the hatred I had for these two who lost my son to go looking for them. End quote. 
Hmm. When Metheny's drug-addled wife took their son and left him, he flew into a rage. He spent days looking for them, checking halfway houses and even under a bridge where he knew his wife used to do drugs. There, he found not his wife, but two homeless men whom he believed did drugs with his wife. Metheny killed them in their sleep and left the bodies there. He later lured two separate women down under the same bridge in hopes of getting information pertaining to the whereabouts of his girl. He thought they were playing dumb and wouldn't give Metheny the information he wanted, so he raped and murdered them. After disposing of the bodies, Metheny noticed a fisherman nearby who was a potential witness to the murders. Metheny killed the fisherman also and hid all three bodies in the water by weighing them down with rocks. Jesus. He was arrested for the murders of the homeless men about three weeks later and spent a year and a half in the county jail awaiting a trial. At trial, however, he was acquitted. Metheny had ended up hiding the bodies of the two homeless men, and there was no physical evidence he had killed them. Prosecutors, of course, also could not find the bodies of the two women and the fishermen. Now free, Metheny resumed his quest of seeking out his missing wife and child. Quote, I went back and talked my old boss into giving my job back to me at the pallet company. There was a little trailer on the property, so I told my boss to let me stay there and I could keep an eye on the place. He agreed to this and gave me the keys to the front gate and main building. The company was on a dead-end road and was very isolated. It was perfect for what I wanted to do. End quote. Metheny lured two more women to the trailer, murdered them, and cut their bodies into pieces. Quote, I cut the meat up and put it in some Tupperware bowls, then put it in the freezer. I buried the remains in several shallow graves in a little woods behind the company. I feel like I've said this before, but I'm genuinely curious about what human tickets like. There's a Vsauce video about it. We, you said that last yeah. time. Yeah. Long pig. It tastes like veal. It tastes like... Um, Baby cow? Yeah. It tastes mm -hmm. like well, young... said a little more disturbing. Young veal. It seemed that he was now murdering people for sport as much as for revenge. Quote, over the next couple weeks on the weekends, I opened up a little open pit beef stand. I had real roast beef and pork sandwiches, and why not? They were very good. The human body taste was very similar to pork. If you mix it together, no one can tell the difference. That's why he was cutting these people up for his open pit barbecue. For weeks, unwitting passers-by, truckers, and townies would all consume bits of human flesh, essentially becoming living hiding spots for the bodies of Metheny's victims. Whenever he needed more special meat, Metheny would simply venture out and find another vagabond. According to his confession, he killed ten people, though authorities say there's no reason to believe he would have stopped there had he not been arrested. He was finally caught in 1996 when a would-be victim managed to escape Joe Metheny's clutches and went to police. Quote, She was screaming, but there was no one around to hear her except me, and I just kept on laughing at her. I turned around for a split second, and that was my mistake, for she ran out the door before I could get to her. There was an eight-foot chain-link fence with barbed wire on top of it around the front of the company. There was a stack of wooden pallets next to the fence about ten feet high. That bitch scaled those pallets like a monkey and jumped the fence and ran down to the main road where some guy in a pickup truck picked her up and took her to a nearby gas station where they called the cops. Oh, wow. Uh, police responded to the location of his trailer and Metheny surrendered. He knew they were coming, so he just kind of gave up. And this is a photo of him during his arrest. He looks like a serial killer. This is him. Normally. That's a... No way. You creepy looking. He's a big boy. Eventually, he was found guilty and sentenced to death, which was overturned in 2000 and changed to life sentences. During his interrogation, he willingly offered up a confession, which I'm reading some quotes of, and details about each of his murders, even mentioning the murder of the fisherman, which he had gotten away with several years before. He also appeared to show no remorse for what he'd done, apart from one thing. Quote, The only thing I feel bad about in any of this is I didn't get to murder the two motherfuckers I was really after, he said. And that's my ex-old lady and the bastard she got hooked up with. Upon his arrest, Metheny told police that no one had complained about the meat tasting funny. In fact, no one seemed to notice that his burgers had a little something extra in them. Quote, 
So the next time you're riding down the road and you happen to see an open pit beef stand that you've never seen before, he warned, make sure you think about this story before you take a bite of that sandwich. Later, on August 5th, 2017, he was found dead in his cell at the Western Correctional Institution in Cumberland, Maryland, at the age of 62. That is the story of Joe Matheny. Wow, he's a train wreck. What a disaster. What a mess. I wonder if um, he sampled his wares. You oh, think? he ate it? You think? I think he was probably curious enough. Yeah, I mean, he's if making... If he did heroin, then he was probably curious <laughs> enough to... If he can do heroin... He can eat a person. He can eat a person burger. There's... Uh... It was mixed with pork. He yeah. can eat a person burger. And if he was feeding people, you know... Got to taste what you're making. Make, make sure it's good, you know. Yeah, yeah. Making sure you're serving good yeah. good food to your customers. He's like, I have standards. <laughs> Got to tweak the recipe a little bit. Oh, this needs a little more human in it. Oh, not enough salt. Not enough human. Um, but yeah, the Vsauce video, uh, there was a, a person like, it was like the mid 20th century, and they wanted to do a study. And they found a willing participant who allowed them to, I think, kill him. I think he died on their own accord. I don't think he died of natural causes, but I think he was killed. Why couldn't you just get like... Yeah, I don't know. A body. <laughs> and he uh, gave them the, the approval to sample him, <laughs> try his meat. And uh, it was a very scientific, well, you know, thought out, very thorough experiment. And there were a lot of note taking. Uh, so they. Who ate him? The uh, scientists? So, yeah, some doctors, some scientists that was doing the study. And they said it tasted uh, very, very similar to veal. Interesting. Um, mm -hmm. What do you think of the beer? I liked it. It was unique. It's I I can't say I've had a beer like this before. Uh, we've definitely haven't had one on the show before, and I don't know if I've ever had a Maybach before. Um, again, I don't think I'd like a normal Bach beer. I can't remember if I've had a Bach. I mean, because there's like uh, double Bach and triple Bach, the very very strong variations of Bach beer, uh, German Bach beers, and I may have had like a double Bach before, but like you, I'm not a big fan of the malty stuff. I do like it's stouts. It's grown on me a little bit, to be honest. I do like stouts, and I do like... Um, oh, what's the other one? You like just porters. every beer. Porters. Stouts and porters. I like stouts and porters. Um, I don't know. It's it's okay. Uh, I don't know if I'd get it again, but it's it's tasty. I finished it. It's, it's good. What about you? It grew on me. I don't like it a hundred percent, but I like it at like a seventy percent now. Yeah, it it's a lager with with a little more malt in it, mm -hmm. which is a little weird because I I would prefer like a Kolsch or, you know, just a standard Pilsner. It's pleasant. It's just I'm not like, wow. Mm -hmm, but I mm -hmm. think that's just because I like sours so much now. <laughs> I'm just and Berliner Weiss. Ooh! Yeah. Keep a lookout for more. Give me a little uh, Berliner in my life. <laughs> Keep a lookout for more Saint Laurent sours. Yeah, I will. They only have a bunch of DDHs right now. I mean, They're I'd like be willing to out. try. I'd be willing to try something. Yeah, but I was looking at it. And I was like, oh, I can't really make a topic out of that. I'll see if they have anything new after we do this one. The um, very subtle, strange aftertaste of chocolate in this too. Oh, I don't notice that at all. It might be the malts. Beer and fearcast at gmail .com. You know it. Are you doing it? You doing the you you closing out the episode? No, I just doing that one. Go ahead. I wanted to throw you off. <laughs> Beer and Fearcast gmail.com. Uh we also have a website. Yeah, Beer and Fearcast.com. No one emails us. It's okay. Uh no we one really you. no one really goes to the website, but what's most important It said we had five clicks. We did, <laughs> you saw that email, yeah. What's most important is that uh, all of our episodes are available on every popular podcast platform, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, wherever you get your podcasts, you can listen to this show. And we release episodes every single week, Wednesday at uh, noon, unless I'm late. Like usual. Like, yeah, it's, I've been... I've been a little late lately. I've been slacking <laughs> lately. But, but uh, yeah. And you can also listen to our uh, episodes on our website, too. A lot of cool stuff on our website. we got the beer list. And then we got the beer map, like the brewery map that Paige didn't know existed a couple yeah. weeks ago, that lists every single brewery in the world that we've had uh, beer from. It's very cool to look at. 
Uh, see the tiny little spots in like individual states. There's a couple in Europe that we had, and then the gigantic cluster in Chicago because that's usually all all we can get. But yeah, check it out. Some yeah. cool shit there. Check it out. That was episode 82. Joe Matheny, the guy who butch- butchered people and uh, made them into burgers. Beer for butchers. Off color. Thanks. Have a good day. Have a good day. <laughs> And I said, have a good day. You come to me on the day of my daughter's wedding. And I say, have a good day.